Hi everyone, welcome back to our Kamali's Church YouTube channel. It's good to be with you all again this week. Uh, and I'm looking forward to uh, sharing a short reflection on God's Word. And today our reading is taken from 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 12. Indeed, we're going to be using uh, a reading uh, that actually appeared roughly this time last year uh, when we were, if you recall, uh, all in uh, lockdown. And um, a number of people in the church uh, took a line uh, each in the reading and uh, it was very appropriate and you'll see why uh, when you hear the reading itself. So we'll come to that in a short moment but before uh, we get to that um, please hear the reminder uh, to get in touch with us should you need us for anything at all. Now you can make contact through our Facebook page or through our website. Details are all there. Okay so now we're going to hand over then to well to you folks, to the congregation, to all those who uh, took part uh, in the reading uh, of uh, this passage uh, last year, and we're going to uh, hear that again uh, today. Just as a body, though one, has many parts, but all its many parts form one body, so it is with Christ. For we were all baptised by one spirit, so as to form one body, whether Jews or Gentiles, slave or free. And we were all given the one spirit to drink. So the body's not made up of one part, but of many. Now if the foot should say, Because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body. It would not, for that reason, stop being part of the body. And if the ear should say, Because I am not an eye, I do not belong on the body. It would not, for that reason, stop being part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? But in fact, God has placed the parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. If they were all one part, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, but one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. And the head can't say to the feet, I don't need you. On the contrary, those parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And the parts that we think are less honourable, we treat with special honour. And the parts that are unpresentable are treated with special modesty, while our presentable parts need no special treatment. But God has put the body together giving greater honour to the parts that lacked it. So that there should be no division in the body, but its parts should have equal concern for each other. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honoured, every part rejoices with it. Now you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is a part of it. Well, thank you to uh, one and all. Uh, thank you very much uh, for your, your reading. Enjoyed that. It was good to see that again. Now, this is a fascinating passage, of course, um, and uh, one that uh, I imagine preached on uh, fairly regularly um, because it's encouraging and it's, it's helpful, but there's a challenge in it too. And we'll explore some of these things uh, uh, just thinking it through together uh, in the moments that we have now. Paul's use of um, the human body uh, to illustrate how the church is made up and how the church functions or should function is an interesting one. In terms of numbers alone, there's there's, there's great interest because um, when you dive into the, the numbers of different parts, individual parts of the human body, you, you find some fascinating things there. I mean... If you're breaking it down to its smallest denomination, you're talking about atoms and such like within cells. Now there's something like 37 trillion cells or something in that region in the human body. And, you know, there are many more, more uh, parts uh, within that cell itself. And so you're talking about thousands of trillions <laughs> of, of individual parts in the human body if you go down to that level. But even in the bigger things, I mean, you've got something like 600 muscles, You've got um, 
500 parts to our joints and uh, so on. So the numbers are, are quite astounding and fascinating. Um, I find it very interesting that Paul chooses to use this. He's inspired to use this, of course, and, and for this to be shared with us. And so we imagine it must be rich in blessing and in teaching for us. But to use this illustration is really interesting. What it does teach us initially when we hear that what we've just reflected upon is the fact that, um, you know, there are, well, well there are many parts uh, to uh, the, the church. Um, it, it is uh, not just simply uh, our little congregation or our denomination or uh, our, you know, church in our land, but, you know, we're thinking about the fact that you know, the church, the universal church, the church of Jesus Christ extends across the ages and across uh, time and space, across the world, uh, and, uh, you know, extends uh, into the future too. So we're talking about um, millions, billions of uh, people uh, who would all make up part of uh, the, the, the body of Christ. Um, often we, when we reflect upon this, we... we boil it down to our congregations. It's used often to encourage congregations uh, in uh, mutual support and working together. And of course, that's that's what I'll be doing a bit of today. And um, that's that's really helpful. But but think of it in the grand scale. You're talking about all these uh, many parts to uh, the body of Christ, all these people who have followed Jesus and loved Jesus, served Jesus and believed in Jesus uh, through, through um through time and throughout history and uh, who will do in the, in the future too. So you're talking about a lot of, of parts and a lot of people. And uh, we reflect upon the idea, not only uh, in the numinous, um, but each part is a, a function, has a purpose. Uh, and uh, uh, there might be there might be varying uh, degrees in terms of uh, the, not so much the, the importance, but the... Um, well, uh, I suppose what I'm getting at is that, that, that some people will be more prominent uh, within the church and some people's names are marked in church history and remembered and others aren't. Uh, you know, some people will be involved in things that will draw attention uh, to uh, to them as well as to Jesus. Uh, and so their, their, their names, you know, are, are um, kept in the history books and um, such like and they are remembered. But behind the, the, that, there are been many who have served in other capacities supporting uh, these ministries and, and such like and supporting these people uh, and working away quietly whose names are not recorded uh, in the same way uh, um, but in God's eyes uh, their contribution has um, uh, has been something beautiful uh, and something valuable and something uh, that he cherishes. So each person has an important role uh, to play uh, in the uh, life of, of the church and the body of Christ. So each part, each uh, member, and I don't use member in the sense that sometimes we might be tempted to use, you know, a member as of an organisation or a member of a club or such like, but I'm thinking a bit more of the terms of the word member in terms of like a limb, <laughs> because essentially um, this is what, uh, how God sees it, that each each person's uh, contribution is uh, is vital, it's part of his design, uh, and um, it can't be overlooked. Um, so each uh, each um, each person who's part of, of the body of Christ has something to give. Uh, now, not only then is it are the is are parts of the body of Christ numinous. Um, not only are they important, but then there's the, comes the challenge to uh, to to church to the church to the church leaders to um, make the most of that to. Uh, allow people space to develop their gifts and to discover their gifts and so on and uh, that's what we uh, strive to do um, but also for us as individuals there's a challenge there uh, that you have to play your part the challenge is that you have to play your part because your part is important and if your part is, isn't um, carried out if you're not performing your functions if you will in the body of Christ then, then that affects it does affect the whole um, think about the human body. Even a few cells going wrong uh, can have a hugely detrimental um, impact on, uh, you know, on the on the whole body. It might only be a few tiny, tiny cells, 
um, uh, microscopic in, in terms of the by comparison to the to the human body. <coughs> but nonetheless, if they uh, don't work properly, then um, the the cause that causes problems. So we the challenge is we've all got to play our part. We've we've all been gifted by God in various ways. We've got to discover what those giftings are, and then we've got to exercise those gifts. Now, this is the work that God's about, of course. Now, so we need we need not worry about it um, unduly. We have our part to play. If we're in leadership, we've got the um, responsibility to develop people's gifts and encourage them in the use of their gifts. Provide space, provide opportunity for that to happen, uh, and we as individuals have to respond to God's um, call in our lives uh, and exercise the gifts that He's given us and play our part, do, do our bit, uh, if you will. Um, but ultimately, you know, the the knitting together of all the parts of the body of Christ is in God's hands, and thankfully that's the case. So it's not dependent on on uh, it, it, it will not. Um, stand or fall on our failures individually. Um, our failures will be uh, sad and, 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 and tragic when they come along, um, but the body of Christ will be built up. Uh, that's for sure. And uh, nothing will prevail against it. Uh, and so God is about that work and he's knitting together all the, the different parts. Now, it's quite fascinating to think how how that work occurs. Knitting together parts that you wonder how they would go together. If you'd never seen a human body and you'd all the parts just laid out, if that were possible, all these tiny little cells, and large muscles and all these sorts of things, and it might be a mystery to you as to how they would possibly uh, come together, what they could possibly make, how they could possibly be formulated. If you'd never seen a human body before, and you had these trillions of parts. Uh, how would you begin to even imagine how it might be knitted together? And then God comes along and he, he does that work of creation. But that's what he's doing in the church too. He's knitting together people who um, are from diverse backgrounds, with diverse interests, people who may, you might imagine might not naturally gel together, might not naturally work together, might not naturally get along, and yet... There's this unity in Christ, in the body of Christ, that, that, that is uh, God's handiwork. And that's something, that's quite something to behold when, when, when that happens, when you see it, when you see it unfolding. So we might take encouragement from that too. Um, it's not uh, dependent on, um, wholly on whether we, we do all that we're supposed to do or whether we get along and, and such like. And thankfully that is, uh, is the case. If it hinged on that, we'd be in trouble, but it, it doesn't. Um, but what we want to do is be, we want to be working with God. We want to be uh, in accordance with God's will in the way that we, we are, in the way that we live, in the way that we are as a church. And, and so, we, you know, we want to be uh, um, knitted together in the best way. Uh, and we want to be part of what God's building. Um, so we have a great opportunity to do that, but we have a, a great um opportunity to encourage others too uh, on the way. Now, there's one more thing I want to leave you with, folks. Because what I've just tried to do here is just giving you a little bit of a, just a few thoughts really on what the passage is saying to us as, as the church and the challenges and, and such like that are there. And there's much more to it than I can possibly um, cover in, in this video. But it's verse 18 that I really want you to have a look at and think about. Because, now, I don't have it right in front of me here, but it's some paraphrasing to an extent. But in verse 18, it tells us that God has placed every part, in the body of Christ, he's placed every part just where he wants them to be. Now, that's significant, because that means that there's nothing that happens within the life of the church within the life of the believer that is haphazard, random or accidental. If God is placing, if we are the parts and God is knitting us together and he's shaping us together and fixing us together into what he, he is designing, 
uh, and we're told in verse 18 that each part is placed where he wants it to be then the fact that you are part of the church that you're part of or the fact that you're um, part of this little community we've got here online or whatever it is the fact that you're part of these things is not random and it's not you know it's not by chance you've arrived here not arrived here by accident um, but God is placing you where he wants you to be now I don't know how you feel when, when you hear that but I feel very much encouraged by that because there's times you know isn't there there are times where you think oh, am I doing any good here am I am you know is the job that I'm doing worthwhile am I helping assisting God or am I more of a hindrance than anything else am I on the same page as God you know you, all these questions just whirl around your mind um but to, to hear that verse 18 and, and to be reminded that God is placing these us the parts of the body of Christ uh, together in just the way that he wants them to be in just the way that he designs that is an encouragement uh, to me to, to keep on going to keep on uh, working away um, and just knowing that God has has it in control we might not think how how you know how, how how's this going to work moving forward we might think as the Church of Scotland, for instance, our denomination, as we begin to face the the very real and severe prospect of churches closing and new congregations being formed and all these different things, and, and there's no point in pretending there won't be sorrow and loss in that and pain. And, and, and you might wonder, well, what's God doing in all of this? You know, how can this be the building of the church when it seems to be that that we're going in the opposite direction. And yet, verse 18, that you know that, that God is building his church. And it isn't just this denomination, but it's across all denominations, across all, the whole world that like we've said already. And and God is building his people together and he's knitting them together. And, and they might look at the situation and think, well, how, how can we work together and how can we recover and how can we uh, move forward uh, together, working in sync and working in coordination. How is this all going to work? To us it might be a mystery, but God knows what he's doing. God knows what he's doing. You know, sometimes it amazes me, you look at um, you, you look at cars that have been in an accident and you think, that car is going to be a write-off. And some of the times you're right, some of the times you, you get it right. But there's there's occasions when you hear of um, you, you see the aftermath of, of accidents, and then you learn that mechanics have managed to rebuild the car. And that's always astounding to me. I, I find that truly fascinating because it seems to me like the car's mangled <laughs> and all the bits are lying all over the place and splattered all over the place, and uh, just it, you know it's just an explosion of, of chaos. Uh, and the, or the impact of the accident and yet it's possible for mechanics to reconstruct uh, vehicles in certain circumstances that just blow my mind and I, I really take my hat off to people who are good with their hands I, I'm so impressed by you folks who can do these things I'm not practical in that way but I find it interesting I find it very very fascinating and interesting well imagine we're in the hands of uh, not not the, only the greatest mechanic, but the greatest engineer, the greatest scientist that ever was, that God. Um, so imagine what, what, what he can do. If humans can do extraordinary things, uh, imagine what he can do. And some people might look at the situation, and they might read, you know, of the fall in Genesis, and they might think, you know, that just an explosion of chaos. You know, God had designed us for life with Him, for company with Him, and then bang, it just, you know. Sin came along and just smashed it to bits. And you think, well, how do we come back from this? How do we ever recover from this? And then we learn of what Paul teaches us here in 1 Corinthians 12, that God is knitting together the body of Christ. He's building his church. You know, he's uh, restoring us to our former glory. Uh, and every part that goes into that construction uh, into that remodeling if you will is by God's design so it just makes you think of your life in a whole different way when you consider that maybe even your birth too and you, you hear folk wondering from time to time well, what, why am I here and what's the what has the, been the purpose of my life thus far and, and so on and maybe we all find ourselves asking that at least once 
But be reminded of that verse 18 of 1 Corinthians 12. In that context of talking about the body of Christ being knit together, there is not one part. And if you're a follower of Christ and if you're, you've are given your heart to Jesus, you're one part. And there's not one part that goes into that design that's accidental, that's random, that has no purpose, uh, that has no uh, particular function. Each part is there because God wants it to be there. And folks, you really need to hear that. And I hope it's an encouragement to you all. Amen. Okay, we're now going to hear uh, our uh, prayer. We're going to join together indeed in our prayer now. So uh, let's pray. God of all grace, we give thanks for the picture which 1 Corinthians 12 gives us of the church as one body. We remember that the disciples were all different, yet they were bound to one another as they followed you. Help us to appreciate the gifts which others have and to be aware of the burdens which others have. In the strength of your spirit, may we bear one another's burdens. Help us to encourage one another so that, through our united service, you will be glorified, others will benefit, and your kingdom will come. Thank you for the description of love which we have in 1 Corinthians 13. We pray that we will be bound to one another in the selfless Christ-centred love which is described there. Continue with us in the fullness of your Spirit as this time of worship comes to a close. And now, may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest upon and remain with us all. Amen.